Helldivers 2 has already three premium warbands in the game, and you're probably wondering what to grab first. And if you're watching this video, you're probably one of those people who don't want to spend money just to grab the warbands, or can't degen their way into farming super credits to grab them all. But don't worry, I am here to help you. Let's discuss and check what is the ideal warbond to get first. But before we continue, it is worth mentioning that Arrowhead stated that they are not removing warbonds from the game, so you can just grab them whenever you can. If you're just here to grab an opinion and my thought on what warbond you should get first, it's the cutting edge one. But if you're into some nitty gritty explanation on why you should grab this and that, feel free to stay. So, let's get right to it! First, let's talk about the Cutting Edge Premium Warband and why you would want to get this first. If you want to have great value out of a Warband with only little grinding, then this Warband is the one you should get first. Let's talk about the notable stuff that you can get from this Warband. First, you've got the Primary Weapon Sickle, the Localization Confusion Booster, Stun Grenade, Plasma Shotgun, blitzer and the laser dagger the best things that you can get from this are the ones that are in the first two pages notably the sickle the stun grenade and the localization booster the sickle is a very well-rounded primary weapon which is why in my opinion if you grab this warband first you'll get really good value out of it early on the later rewards are they're kind of a they're just kind of an eh Localization Confusion is one of the best boosters you can use, especially on roaming missions. What this does is that it stops enemies from chaining their reinforcements, so you won't have to deal with continuous dropships or bug breaches. But it's still not foolproof since patrols are still a thing. The Stun Grenade is my favorite grenade to use since it stuns pretty much everything except for the Bile Titans and tanks. It helps a lot especially when I'm getting ganged up on or if I just want to line up a perfect shot. The only disadvantage of this grenade is that it can't close fabricators or bugness. The later weapons here are pretty niche and kind of needs a little bit of build crafting but they are still very usable. I am not going to explain what everything in this warband can do in detail because there are videos out there explaining what they can do. So just go and check them out. For the armors, there's not much to say about them. They literally have the same perks and in my opinion, not really usable. At the moment at least. So in summary, if you are the kind of player that wants to have the good stuff early and don't mind having mid stuff later on, then this is the warband for you. Now if you're the kind of player who doesn't mind grinding for the good stuff, then here's the steel veterans. Let's talk about things that we can get from this warband. We've got the liber liberator concussive, the senator sidearm, Incendiary Grenade, Incendiary Breaker Shotgun, Jar 5 Dominator, and the Flexible Reinforcement Budget Booster. The best stuff that you can get from this Warbond is on the second and third page, which is the Incendiary Nade, Incendiary Breaker, and the Jar 5 Dominator. Both weapons have received massive buffs recently, and they are on a good spot right now. The Incendiary Breaker is arguably the best weapon to use against the bugs. It has decent handling, good ammo capacity, and not to mention it burns enemies on hit. While the Jar 5 Dominator is one of the best weapons you can use against the bots. People argue that there are better weapons, but in the Warband side of things, these two are the notable things that you could say that has value. The Incendiary Nade is one of the nades that I use occasionally if I feel like a pyro build. It burns enemies in its radius and it closes both bug holes and fabricators. The earlier stuff that you can get here are kind of underpowered at the moment, but since Arrowhead tends to adjust things around, it will probably get its time to shine. When it comes to the armors, it has two medium sets and one heavy, but they all share the same perks. In my opinion, it's not really that good since there's a booster that helps with limb health and most of the time, if you are damaged enough to have a damaged limb, you will have to heal up anyway, removing the debuff. All in all, a little bit of metal grinding for this one, but very worth if you get to grab the weapons. Now for the latest Warbond, the Democratic Detonation. This Warbond is filled with stuff that are kind of niche and requires a little bit of build crafting for them to be effective. So if you're that player who likes to mess around with stuff, then this Warbond is for you. But first, let's take a look at the things that we can get from this Warbond. You've got the Adjudicator Marksman, the Thermite Grenade, 
the Raptor Sniper Rifle, an Expert Extraction Booster, the Grenade Pistol, and the Exploding Crossbow. The items that are worth taking here if we're talking about usefulness is the Eruptor Sniper and the Grenade Pistol. <laughs> I am not disregarding the other stuff, it's just that these two are the most effective in this warband as of the moment, so don't at me. The Eruptor Sniper is an actual powerhouse. It snipes from a distance and deals massive explosive area of effect damage. While the Grenade Pistol is more of an additional utility weapon, making space for you to run other types of grenades while still being efficient at closing bug holes and fabricators. This is the only warband that I could say that holds good armors compared to the others. And they are actually really useful. The first page has the medium ground breaker armor. Currently, it has servo assisted as its perks, but Arrowhead pointed out that this was a mistake and will change it soon into its intended form of engineering kit, having more grenades. Second page, we have a light armor version with the engineering kit perk. And lastly, the Devastator Heavy Armor rocking the Fortified perk. This warbond is more on the build crafting side of things and does require you to grind some metals to grab those noteworthy weapons. So, if you love to make some niche builds and don't mind grinding for them, then by all means, grab this warbond first. And that is basically it. These are the war bonds that are currently available and I hope I help you think about what to get first. There are more coming in the future since Arrowhead confirmed that every second Thursday of the month, they're gonna be releasing a new one. So do watch out for that. Of course, these things are subject to change since nerfs and buffs will be occurring. But then again, by the time that that does happen, you probably already have the others unlocked. If you think this was helpful and want to see more of me, leave a like and subscribe. And if you think I missed something, please let me know. And with that, I take my leave. Go back to spreading freedom, Helldiver.